Now, the rest of the story. His name was Wade Morrison. One hundred years ago, early in the 1880s, he was a young pharmacist working at a drugstore in rural Retreat, Virginia. The drugstore was owned by a local physician, a rather stern old fellow, but a fair employer. And Wade was in love with his employer's daughter. Irredeemably infatuated, young Wade Morrison arrived early at church every Sunday just so he could be standing at the door as she walked inside. Passing her house, Wade always strolled slowly, hoping for a glimpse of his beloved or perhaps even a wave should she be sitting on the front porch. Wade Morrison racked his lovesick brain for a way to get and hold the attention of his employer's lovely young daughter. And when next she did come into the drugstore, it all happened quite naturally. He said, good afternoon, and she answered with the same words, and she was smiling, and he stepped behind the soda fountain, proudly announced that he'd been experimenting, and he had invented a special soda just for her. Artfully combining a variety of fruit flavors, he prepared the delightful concoction. She, blushing, said that she was flattered, and so Wade's one-way romance blossomed into a mutual one. He asked if he might call on her. Happily, she granted his request, and within weeks, their relationship intensified. He was about to propose when the whole world caved in on top of Wade Morrison. The girl's father, Wade's employer, came into the drugstore one morning, said he wanted to have a word with a young pharmacist. He said, I'll get right to the point. He said, I don't want you seeing my daughter anymore. And then the stern old physician explained his reasoning, the predictable protest that his little girl was too young to make up her own mind. And then a rather, rather cruel postscript to the effect that when his daughter was old enough, surely she would have the good sense to entertain a more worthy suitor, a lawyer perhaps, or should she be so lucky, a respected physician like her father. The next day, the unhappy young pharmacist was packed and gone from rural retreat, gone west, never ever to return. Runaway Wade Morrison's broken heart did mend. He settled in Waco, Texas, eventually owned his own drugstore there. Respected in his community, happily he married a Texas girl. His life in the West proved even more rewarding than it could ever have been elsewhere. And strangely, he owed it all to that stern old Virginia physician who had refused to have him for a son-in-law. It was appropriate then, was it not, that the most popular soda invented and served in Wade Morrison's own drugstore, the soda that he had first concocted for his long-lost love, was named after his boyhood employer. And as surely as he never forgot that first painful, wonderful love of his young life, he was never going to let you forget her father, the man whose callous disapproval ultimately drove a young pharmacist to a success that otherwise he could never have known. It was not just a made-up name. There really was a stubborn old Virginia physician named Dr. Pepper. Only now you know the rest of the story. <laughs>